So you probably all know this story. Orbitz finally admitted that they sent more expensive hotel ads to people who came in through Macs than PCs. Just a prejudice yeah. that you know, they had. Uh, but you know, they made an assumption that people on Macs were more affluent. And that's just, again, sort of the beginning, all right? Safeway, Safeway in their online shopping site has variable pricing on an individual basis. And do you think they give me the break on Charmin? I'm a regular Charmin customer, you know, sort of frequent flyer. No, they give the break to the Kleenex customer because they want to convert them to a Charmin customer. And they do this in real time. Uh, a Chicago-based company, local offer network, the first time you visit the site in the 30 milliseconds that it takes to load that web page, they customize and personalize offers to the customers. 30 milliseconds, okay? Facebook, again, a big player in the space. When you go off of Facebook to check out a site, if you go to the Nordstrom site and you see a great pair of shoes, when you come back to Facebook, guess what's there? A retargeting ad that says it's too bad you didn't buy those shoes, okay? But here's a little reminder because we know you're interested. Now, that's another one of these cases where retargeting sounded pretty cool yesterday. Okay? Yesterday, because today retargeting is already changing. So if I'm looking for a car, they don't just send me a car ad. The tool actually says this guy is going to get an ad for a luxury car. Okay, this guy is looking for an inexpensive car. This guy's not getting any car ad. Now, why would they not give me a car ad? Okay, because I bought a car within the last 48 hours or three days or six months. Okay, so they know my behavior. They know that that would be a wasted bullet. They don't bother. Okay, they are totally focused on results. And so, for the luxury guy, he might be interested in you know grading up accessories, new sound systems. Okay, the inexpensive guy might be focused on environmental considerations. So, on a per customer basis. This creative is being created, it's being priced, it's being delivered, and it's made at the individual level, and it's really, really powerful. And Facebook has sort of figured out how you can do this against your customer populations without sharing your customer lists with Facebook. This is a big win for everybody, because nobody really wants to trust Facebook with a list of customers. So Facebook is also starting to look at conversations. One of the most recent examples was rolling into summer, they were watching moms talk about summer camp, and then they were hitting them with ads for bug spray, bug repellent, and stuff for their kids. And you know, they were able to say, we know they're prime, we know they're in the marketplace, we know they have kids, all of this data, that's, that's where it's going. All right, Twitter. Everybody thinks Twitter is sort of a trivial deal, it's really not. It's where these conversations are going on between your customers, your employees, your vendors, your partners. Very, very critical. Everything today also is not one way, it's two way. Everything is a conversation. Um, I recommend the site only if you don't have a life. It's called Twistory. Uh, what it does is you put in a word, okay? And when you put in the word, it starts to feed you all of the tweets, 65 billion tweets that use that word. Now, think of this in terms of that being your name or your product. Think of the ability to watch real-time conversations going on about what people are discussing about your products, your services, and to react in real time to that kind of information as well. Uh, Twitter is starting to get into your tweets, get into those fields, and to build analysis that says, I need a few more than a focus group would tell you, but I don't need a whole lot more. And, and the degrees of precision, 50 tweets, they can pretty much give you a personality psychographic analysis. 200 tweets, they can own you. I mean, they literally have that degree of analysis available through um, these systems. Uh, so there are new systems that are basically tracking this. This is sort of what, what I love about the Twitterverse, and that is we can now tell who likes us, sort of the green guys, who hates us, and who is undecided. This is the old uh, Yogi Berra he used to say that the key to being a great baseball manager was you have to keep the people who hate your guts away from the ones that haven't decided. Okay? So, so here we can tell who loves us, who hates us, all right? Who are the big talkers? What are the channels they're using? Why would you spend 
against a channel other than where the conversations you're interested in are going. That's the kind of information. This was a project we did when the, I, this is sort of way back when, when Verizon was about to bring out the iPhone, uh, so it was the second vendor after AT&T. AT&T asked us to look at the marketplace, so we looked at like uh, almost two million tweets, and we parsed it to the people who were staying with AT&T regardless. These are brain dead people, okay? You should be, they should change to two tin cans and a string, but be that as it may. Uh, the people who were gonna move regardless of the people who were on the fence. And where do you think they spent their money? The people who were on the fence. Three times the firepower against a third of the marketplace. Powerful, powerful marketing information. This is sort of a graph we did of breakups on Twitter, okay? And it tells you a lot of stuff. It says, you know, basically college kids don't like to take their soon-to-be ex-boyfriend or girlfriend on vacation with them or home to see mom. Tells them that April Fool's jokes can go really bad, okay? Uh, that nobody wants to be alone on Christmas Day, okay? So very few breakups on Christmas Day. But this is the kind of stuff we can tell them move to the whole country now. All of this information is available and mineable in new ways. I always mention Roger Ebert, you know, that used to be how he kept score. Now we have millions of people reporting to us on Wednesday night about a new movie. And, you know, we're actually seeing increasingly, certainly at previews, and at Tribeca we do a lot of film festivals, we do a lot of previews, people are now encouraged to tweet in the course of the show because you need to get that feedback that fast. Okay? And so technology is creeping into the theater. This is a pretty good application of technology. I'm going to show you a great application right now. Okay? This is the most powerful single theatrical piece of software that exists. It's called Run P. And it tells you when to leave during the movie to take a pee. Okay? And it tells you you won't miss this. It's sort of a glory love song. It's, you know, here's what's going to happen. you got a minute and a half. Fly around, get back, okay? And you'll keep the story going. So these are important technologies, okay? But the Twitterverse is powerful, okay? There are gripe sites. They're enabled. They're mobile. They're real-time. A hashtag can turn into a battlefield in no time at all. Um, and you just can't permit that. You've got to be in the space. You've got to be engaging consumers in order to do this. Now, this is a big change. It's not about just speed. And it's not just about access. It's about <laughs> measurement. And when we talk about measurement, let me just tell you, and I don't know how many of you were at the light bank sort of demo day not so long ago, but this guy was actually there. This is the guy who is the king of uh, pizza okay, for Dominic's. And, or Domino's, sorry. And uh, he's an amazingly active social guy. And so in the big four, big four pizza chains, sales are up based on essentially social media, 6%. 70,000 independent pizza shops, sales are down, okay? Share is shifting, why? Because the big guys are completely and totally active in delivery, online menuing, uh, the social media conversations, all kinds of couponing. So if you're in the game, that's great, and if you're not in the game, you're just not gonna be in business much longer. This is not sort of a casual thing. This is about, not success, this is about survival to a real extent. Um, you've probably seen this little thing. This is up in the corner usually, and it says, in 12 seconds, you'll be redirected, but if you click now, you can, uh, you know, you can skip the content. So what's interesting about that is now you only pay if somebody actually does watch the video or does watch the content for a period of time. And that's significant. So what we're saying is eyeballs don't matter, audiences don't matter, all that stuff is brute force measurement. That's the old way. The new way is engagement matters, action matters, all of these kinds of things that we can now measure to degrees that never were able to do before. So I don't say big data, we say smart data, we say data that helps you look at issues of amplification within the social world. It's not enough that you got one person, it's how many people did they share your message with? How many people did you convert into sort of active zealots and components for your program? Uh, Pathful is a, a Techstars tech company that's right here. I love what they're doing. I mean, basically, you know, they've solved an amazing <clears throat> sort of low-hanging problem that nobody really figured out, and that is, 
you know, they can look at four or five websites of competitive players in the space. This happens to be some analysis from five of the phone companies. And they can determine which website works, which website frustrates people, which website provides sort of a direct thoroughfare to getting to the end game. And that kind of analysis is really important because who's the last person that will tell you whether your website is good or not? Okay? The guys who built it, right? They're douchebags, right? So, <laughs> the, so the trick is to get some independent audit going. That's what these guys are doing. It's really interesting. It's, it's brain and so are these guys, click tail. All of these guys are basically bringing tools to us that permit us to make a lot of sense out of things that we either took for granted or didn't have a way to measure in the past. Um, here's a really interesting thing. Uh, this is sort of an old wives' tale. Everybody thought that mobile and tablets and phones was going to cannibalize TV. So this is 17 days of results during the last Olympics. And we discovered, much to our joy, that supplementary devices are additive. They don't cannibalize the marketplace. They build time, they build exposure, they build opportunity. So it's really exciting because it means that we now have uh, the ability to do commerce on the side, supplementary information, communication with your friends, all kinds of social sharing without diminishing sort of the power of that giant collectivity, which is you know, TV. Uh, so what's going to bring these together? Devices. Uh, everything in the world is going to you know, talk to each other. This is a Samsung Galaxy 3. What I like about it is it turns off the screen when you're not looking at it. So it's looking out at you and saying, are you looking at me? It's better than Santa Claus, actually. It actually knows you know, what you're doing. Uh, Locket is a company in New York that we're involved in. They're putting on your lock screen offers. Very interesting space. You know, we've known for years that that was very, very prime real estate. Uh, they're putting ads in that space, and it will be interesting to see what happens. But certainly, somebody's going to figure that out as well. Uh, we look at our phones 150 times a day. And that's just the ones of us who are normal. Okay. Uh, this is a device that you put in the uh, the dryer, and when the dryer stops rotating, it calls your phone. It says the laundry is. Uh, Done. Okay, it measures temperature, rotation, moisture, all these kinds of things. So connectivity is where we're headed. Everything is going to be connected. Smartphones exploded much more than we expected. Uh, and it's here to stay. And anything that computes will be connected. Okay. So I love this example. Java Juice has such good metrics about how their business works that in 15 minute intervals all day long they're able to say, Who's selling what? What drinks you're selling? Who's doing the best job? Who's the most productive employees? And they folded that around into a loop that's so powerful that that's how they allocate extra shifts. That's how they allocate overtime. Why wouldn't you put your best player into those slots? Those are the people that are going to produce the most for you. So we're going to be able to watch productivity in new ways. You've probably seen this. You know, what you don't understand is these Coke-free dispensers are actually survey devices. It's astonishingly <coughs> useful to find out what flavors millions of consumers are preferring and what they're mixing, and Coke is using this data to develop new products. I mean, if 10 million people like Cherry Coke, you can bet we'll see 14 more variations of Cherry Coke. And so um, these are new ways of using connected devices to do what we call smart reach, to get two consumers at the right time to capture information, to process that information, and then to return it. And so basically, what do we need? When do we need it? Wherever we are, and without asking. So when we talk about, uh, and Derek, this is your shop, when we talk about, OK, Google Now, okay, we're talking about our phones being active, the new, uh, if you haven't seen the new you know, uh, Moto phone, the Moto X, it listens all the time. OK, Google now. And basically, it turns on, all right, and it's ready for instructions or commands. So uh, basically, that's where the stuff is headed. Persistent, omnipresent devices, complete connectivity, um, all of that is part of sort of the, the new emotional world of, uh, of these kinds of devices. And uh, we've proven that you can actually bounce it off the floor, too. Uh, not, not that I intended to do that. Here